Good afternoon, everyone. It's David Schlotthauer here with another detailed weather forecast for Tuesday afternoon, April the 22nd, 2025. To start things off, here's a look at the very latest SPC forecast for today, April the 22nd, 2025. And as we can see here, there is a slight risk for severe weather all the way from southwestern Texas into western Oklahoma into central and southern Kansas. And this is driven by a risk for tornadoes primarily across far western Texas and along with that there's a risk for damaging winds exceeding 60 to 70 miles an hour but the good thing here is we're not seeing any significant probabilities at this point there's also a risk for large hail too today possibly seeing some hailstones up to two plus inches in diameter but it doesn't end there as we look at Wednesday April 23rd here on the SPC there's also a slight risk for severe weather in the same exact area that has slight risk for severe weather today. And that's for, again, western Texas with a large marginal risk for severe weather across Kansas. Would not be surprising if that actually gets upgraded eventually to a slight risk, especially in far central and western Kansas due to what I'm about to show you. There's a marginal risk for severe weather across the southeastern United States due to some air mass thunderstorms. But that's nothing compared to with what we're going to be seeing as we go into day seven. Before we get to that, though, here's a look at the tornado risk, though, for Wednesday. And you can see there's a 2% risk for tornadoes stretching from southwestern Texas, western Texas into far western Kansas, driven by a 15% risk non-sig for damaging winds and some large hail as well. Now let's take a look at that latest HRRR model. This is the composite reflectivity forecast that I always like to use in terms of short range forecasting. And what we have is this evening, this is right around say about 10 o'clock central daylight time. And we do have showers and thunderstorms that are going to be popping off in the next hour or two across far western Texas. Some of these storms initially will pose a threat for tornadoes. Very large hailstones, two plus inches in diameter perhaps, along to go with very strong erratic outflow winds at times that could exceed 60 plus miles an hour. So keep that in mind here if you're in Amarillo, Texas, if you're in say Abilene, Texas, in that area, generally speaking, Lubbock, Texas, just be aware, yes, there's going to be some thunder boomers this afternoon. And those storms will migrate eastward into the DFW area, so, such as Dallas, Fort Worth region. Uh, if you're in Austin, Texas, eventually in Abilene overnight, we're going to see those storms. And look at the Boeing future to this. It means there's going to be some very strong winds associated with these storms. All right, and like what you thought yesterday, these storms would die out. Doesn't look like that's going to happen now just because we have more energy in the atmosphere than I'm about to show you. So by Wednesday morning for your morning commute, these storms are going to be approaching far eastern Texas. So like Tyler, Texas, eventually into Houston, Texas. Keep that in mind. Some strong storms there. We also got some showers and thunderstorms here across Chicago, Milwaukee. If you're in northern Indiana, if you're in central southern portion there of um, Illinois or um, Iowa, I meant to say here, you got some showers and thunderstorms. But the good news is when it comes to nighttime, these end up being elevated. So most likely an elevated nature type setup here with these storms. Now, as we go into tomorrow afternoon here, this is when we'll be concerned for more severe weather, especially early on in the period. We have better chances here of severe weather throughout late morning, early afternoon tomorrow across Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, Alabama. Some of these storms will pose a threat for some large hail, possibly quarter size, since our lapse rates are not super steep here, which is good. We don't want some destructive hail, but quarter size will do the job too, just not as significant if it was two or three inches in diameter. Nonetheless, hail threat here. Also, maybe a non-zero risk for tornadoes. You just never know with any of these storms. They could pose all severe hazards, including damaging winds too. But it is going to be over here back across western Texas by the afternoon hours. That's what, where we're going to need to really watch for these storms to pop up. And you can see a few of them here do pop up in the afternoon. On this model in particular, though, doesn't look 
very widespread. So it is interesting that they do keep the slight risk for severe weather, likely due to the risk due to some very large hailstones, maybe two inches in diameter. But look what's going on up here to the north, especially in northern Kansas into northwestern Missouri into Iowa. This is where we're going to have some Boeing segments, part of a uh, confluent zone, a cold front that is going to be draped across the region. And what that's going to do, we're going to get some lift, get some convection along with that. And that's going to result in these storms to fire up and intensify, especially tomorrow night on the 23rd of April into the 24th here on your Thursday, we're going to see these storms really pop up. And going forward for your morning commute, that's going to continue all the way into central and southern Kansas, where we have this pretty impressive Boeing segment that could contain some pretty intense wind gusts, perhaps 60 to 70 miles an hour, especially Thursday morning. So yeah, for your morning commute in central southern Kansas, it's going to be a very dicey one. And then as we go into the very end of the model run here, that line of storms can continues to propagate further south into northern portion there of Oklahoma. Now, the reason why these storms are going to be quite explosive today and tomorrow is the amount of thunderstorm juice that is in the atmosphere. This is basically telling us of how intense these updrafts are going to be. Will they pose a threat for some large hail and damaging wind gusts based on all that energy? So the higher the calculation here that we're seeing in joules per kilogram, the stronger these updrafts are going to be. And usually the ending result is, depending on our lapse rates, we can get some big time hailstones like we're going to see in western Texas today and also for tomorrow. So moving forward here, you can see all that energy is going to be used up in the way of strong thunderstorms. And out ahead of these storms, look at this. 2,500 joules per kilogram in central Texas, near the DFW area, Austin, Texas, Albaline, Texas. That's why I'm pretty concerned that we're going to have some big time wind and hail producing storms this afternoon and evening along this boundary, along this bowing out segment that migrates into central Texas. Now, of course, this is based on the HRRR. Every model has its own parameters of calculation, and that means a forecast is going to be different based on what model you look at. But you can see here that line falls apart eventually as we go into the early afternoon hour. So it's not going to be like a derecho by any means. It's just going to be a nice good line of storms, I should say. And then the air mass recovers thereafter. Look at all the energy over the deep south. And that's going to be those air mass thunderstorms that we're going to see. And then by Wednesday afternoon, look at all that energy that is going to be available for the next round of storms by tomorrow afternoon for Western Texas. Now, as far as that moisture goes, boy, is it going to be soupy and muggy out there across the deep south, including for Texas and Oklahoma. Dew points in the 60s and 70s, miserable out there to say the least, especially overnight tonight. Not going to cool off very much because those dew points are so dang high. And then tomorrow, Still very humid here across much of the deep south. I mean, ridiculous. Got dew points in some areas here in the far upper 60 range to even lower 70s. So warm, hot, and muggy tomorrow is how it's going to feel. And that's going to contribute to some very high heat indexes in some of these areas, especially when you don't get any storms. Or if you don't, you're going to have heat indexes close to 90 degrees despite your air temperature being a little lower. And it's all because of how moist the air mass is actually going to be, and that introduces that instability. Now, when we take a look at how much rainfall you could see with some of these thunderstorms that move over the same area, we're looking at anywhere between about three quarters of an inch up to about two inches of rainfall, especially once we get to day two here over Kansas, where that little MCS wants to move from northwest to southeast, that could bring anywhere between about an inch or two of rainfall. So some needed rainfall there for sure. And also far western Texas with all the fires that happened back in mid to late March, early April. It's good to get some relief there. Anywhere between about a half an inch to an inch of rain is anticipated. Now that we talk about Tuesday's and Wednesday's severe weather threat across Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, portions of Nebraska, and the Deep South, it's a good idea that we also touch upon next week's severe weather event that could be unfolding here on Monday, April the 28th. This look at the latest SPC Outlook Day 7 
and they have highlighted a 15% risk for severe weather all the way from central southern Minnesota all the way down here into northern portion there of Oklahoma. There could be the risk here of more substantial tornadoes, large hail, and damaging 70 mile an hour winds perhaps. Now, when we look at this on the GFS model 500 millibar upper level air chart, this is the cyclonic relative vorticity. So how much spin, how much energy is in the atmosphere for lift, for cyclogenesis to take place? And what we look for is a trough like this, one that's neutrally tilted over the over the de uh, desert southwest, so over the Intermountain West. This becomes negatively tilted once it gets into the high plains. Now, does this materialize and develop convection? As we move this forward into um, Sunday afternoon, this is the 27th of April, by the way, you can see a lot of energy. So all this positive vorticity advection moving over the high plains here, especially over the Dakotas, over Nebraska, Minnesota, and Iowa. This is what's going to give us the risk here for severe weather. All right, and I'll explain why there is still some uncertainty in regards to, despite all of this, there may be a limited amount of deep convection, especially to the south, okay? That trough moves into the high plains as we go into Monday morning. Now, the timing here is Monday morning. That makes things less favorable for tornadoes, but makes it more favorable for damaging wind gusts on a significant scale. Here's a look at the latest surface-based Convective inhibition. This is basically the amount of energy that prevents thunderstorm development, in other words, unless we get into the elevated nature stuff, which we'll get into another video one of these days, right? But looking at the surface-based convective inhibition here, yes, it is strongly capped, and we expect that to happen. As we go into the overnight hours here of Sunday into Monday next week, right? Um, anywhere between negative 200 to negative 300 joules per kilogram, which is pretty significant of a capping inversion. And when we just click on an example sounding here, hopefully this is, gets captured very well. Yeah, it's a pretty strong cap, shall we? Good EML influence there. Get any thunderstorms, it's gonna, I'm gonna be surprised. And the fact that the SPC did highlight an area here means they're on the lookout for maybe something to develop at least out ahead of this cold front as it surges eastward and out ahead of the dry line as well. But, anyways, if you found this video very helpful, informative, and detailed, Please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell notification icon, hit that like button if you did enjoy the video, and please leave a comment in the section below this video. Let me know what your thoughts are about Monday's severe weather threat and what I might have missed in the video. So please leave a comment if you haven't already. You guys are awesome. You guys really are, and I'm thankful for making these videos for you all, okay? Be sure to also check out my TikTok. There's a link in the description and also check out our Weather Force Discord server. There's also a link in the description below this video. I will see you guys back here tomorrow with another update on that Monday's severe weather threat.